nice touch. Hi guys, Zeno Roman here with another edition of Fishing with Lures. I'm just having a cup of coffee here. And thinking about this particular subject, which is fishing areas with no current, meaning a dead spot. Okay, so now the surprising part is why would a junkie like me who loves white water, and you've seen my videos about white water and fishing open beaches and and all the exciting stuff and rough water, why would a guy like me spend any time fishing in dead spots? Dead spots, dead water, non-moving water, flat water. Um, because although those particular locations sound like they're non-productive, they actually are a big fish magnets. If a particular spot, obviously, I'm not saying in any dead fish spot is going to be a big fish magnet. But a lot of places, if you go to a lot of places where um, you have a lot of boulders and kelp and uh, rocks, uh, where you have a lot of blackfish and porgies, and you know, and you don't have a crazy amount of current, um, those spots can be fished differently and very productive, yet um, most of the stuff that you use normally up front, meaning in the, in the ocean or in the inlets, are not really useful that much. Um, how, I mean, this is not going to be a long video. I can already tell because there's really not much. Uh, if, if I was going to go in that area and you were fishing a back bay somewhere in the North Shore, which doesn't have a lot of current, but has a a pretty good uh, chance for a big fish because it's in close proximity to deep water. There's some boulders there. There's some bait fish around. The big fish likes to feed on big meals. Okay, let's get this out of the way. Uh, I, I have yet to see uh, a big fish in the, in the rain bait uh, blitz or mato ever. Okay, I, I, I haven't seen it. You might have seen it. I haven't. And if you've seen one out of a million, that doesn't really constitute... Um, an occurrence that's just a freak thing my point is the big fish the biggest fish that I took had four no one two three 17 inch fluke or I don't know some flounder if you want to call them stacked up in its stomach okay uh, three full non-digested half a bunker and it took my bunker head so just goes to show you, there was no sand deals in there. There was no spearing in there. This big fish, they don't grow to be that big to, uh, by, by feeding on this little tiny stuff, okay? It's just not enough food. Or you're never going to see a sumo guy uh, in a, at a salad bar. It's never going to happen. They need to consume more food for energy, okay? So they will feed in these areas where there's blackfish, where there's, where there's uh, fluke, where there's sea bass, because those kind of meals appeal to them. And a lot of times in these areas, you'll find bunker. You will find bunker. And so how do you fish it? Well, okay, all of this stuff in front of me, I'm, and this is just the random stuff that's in front of me for this particular video, uh, doesn't really quite work that well in, in flat water. Uh, daughters don't really work well with no current. Um, this is just a prop banana plug that Jock Freck makes. I'm not even going to, to you know, this, this does. This is, this is uh, Gary's uh, um, gigantic uh, pikey. Um, stuff like needlefish, like this is a super strike needlefish that sinks like a stone without a current. You wouldn't want to use this. Uh, this is a four ounce needlefish. You would not want to use it. Well, it's not four, actually, I'm sorry, it's three ounce. You would not want to use this. This is another one, rough water uh, plug. This is my favorite rough water popper, uh, two and three eight of an ounce uh, black eye super strike um, uh, popper, but I would never use this in those kind of conditions. Uh, pencil popper, eh, maybe, uh, but I wouldn't fish the flat, no calm area in the daytime. I would fish that primarily at nighttime, actually probably all the time in nighttime. Uh, so what would I, a bottle plug? No, where is it gonna go? I mean, there's really no need for a bottle plug. If, the, if it's flat and calm, 
Ballot blocks really are not something that, that you would be used. Would you use, do I have anything here? No, I don't have all that stuff. Would you use like a heavy bucktail? No. Bucktails, again, are best used with moving water. They, it's best presented, unless you're up on a boat and you're going up and down, then a heavier bucktail can work. But in a surf, if there's no moving water, heavy bucktails is not going to be your friend. So what would you use? My opinion, and I know a lot of you is going to say, well, this is a look video. My opinion, the best thing that you can ever get for those kind of areas are live eels. Not even rig deals, which I love more than live eels. I hate live eels. I hate live eels with passion. They hate me. I hate them. That's just, there's no love lost between us. Um, ha, funny story. We were in Cuddy Hunk years and years ago. And we're fishing Southwest Point. And there's a guy in a, with a bucket and, and, and waders, okay? I'm sorry. Bucket and hip boots. I'm on a rock. He's next to me with a bu white bucket and hip boots. With a conventional with throwing eels. And they're literally landing at my, at my rock. He took, I don't know, four or five fish or six fish over 30. I got a few fish. But my fish, are fish are blood. My fish were nowhere near what he was and I'm not a live eel guy okay so I, I wasn't going to get upset over it but I just didn't catch any fish so I went to sleep and the next morning we woke up and we were staying at Cardigan Club a fishing club and I, I looked out of the window and there's four bass 40 pounds and over laying on the grass right underneath my window so I come out I said what he's like the guy's like where'd you go I said oh, I went to Southwest Point he's like Southwest Point that's like a a mile, two mile walk. He's like, I just went by the cemetery here with eels. We, in an hour, we kill all these fish and then we were done. We're going back. I'm like, I'm like, Jesus, it's live eels. I mean, I hate using them. So I said, look, you have any eels left? He's like, I got these three or four. They're not that big. I, you know, he used the good eels. Okay. So he left like, a little eel. So I said, can I trade you for some? He's like, oh, I saw the beach master that you had. I really liked that. I'm like, and this was in the days where beach masters were like, you, you, you could, you know, you, you can name your firstborn if you can get a particular beach master, Danny. So I gave him the plug. He gave me three eels. And uh, I went to the spot where I was last night. But now I'm saying to myself, I'm going to be on that rock with a wetsuit, okay? I am, with these three eels, I'm going to slaughter the fish. So I'm on a, on a, on a, on a rock, I, you know, set up. So now... First, I got eels in a Ziploc bag because I can't, you know, I don't have the bag for it and stuff like that. So I'm trying to figure this out. Of course, look, I'm on a rock. I'm trying to get an eel. It slips out of my hand. Okay, I'm down to two eels, okay? So now I'm cursing myself. I'm going like, oh, my God, I'm such an asshole. So I'm careful with a second eel. I, 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 I hook it through the bag, and then I pull it out. Great. He's on. Hold this. That's great. Put the bag. I got one more eel in my bag. I load it up. Now, I'm a plug caster, okay? I'm not an eel guy. I don't know what the, you know, I'm doing. So I go, and that eel explodes in a million pieces. The blood's raining on me. The eel just blew up. I mean, you're not supposed to cast an eel like that. You're supposed to, somewhere between a cast and a lob or a bunker is where your eel is at. You know, nice and easy, smooth motion. Not rip it, so I ripped the hook off. So now I'm not to the last eel, okay? I mean, this was a comedy of errors. I got the last deal on. I'm cursing myself. I, I make this little like, I'm like, he was catching fish yesterday right on my feet. So I'm just like, uh, throw it out there. And now I get a bump like immediately. And I don't know how to fish live eels. I'm not a live, I'm a rig deal guy, okay? So I got the live eel on and I'm like, okay, I know this bow to the cow shit where you got to lower the rod down, you know, and, and you let it line set tight. It's almost like bait fishing in some way. So, you know, I, I kind of follow the, the bumps with my rod, blah, 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 and I set down there. I, I, <laughs> I miss the fish. I come right off the rock. My bag opens up. All my plugs are floating away. It was such a bad experience. It was an awful experience. But having said that, if I was fishing an area like a slack tide somewhere, which, by the way, we can call shit spot a good spot on a slack tide because most of this shit ain't gonna work. So what is it gonna work? Live eels, uh, by far the best for any slack tide, for any spots where you don't have a lot of moving water. Rig deals, are, I love rig deals, okay? I, I, I use them a lot, but rig deals I find benefit from a little bit of current to give them a little bit of life, 
okay? Just my opinion. Um, they don't look to me as appealing on a slack water as, as they do in a little bit of current. Again, there's a fine difference between little current and a lot of current because uh, a lot of current, the rig deal just come right up on the top and, and it's, it's useless. So, you know, again, and I mentioned this in many videos already, don't force it, okay? Whatever it's calling for, that's what you give it. So if it's calling big current and you got to put three ounce bucktail, don't go with a rig deal and fish up on the top when everybody's fish to bottom. Besides the fact that you're not going to catch anything, you're going to tangle everybody up and you're not going to make a lot of friends. So that would be my number one choice. Obviously, this is a conversation about plugs, so we'll go over some plug options. S small bucktails, yeah, I mean, you could do that, but I would do that if I was targeting schoolies early in the spring or weak fish. I wouldn't do that if I was targeting decent fish. Uh, first of all, they don't cast well. They don't present a big target. Uh, I would go with something like this. You know, a big metal lip uh, that's going to make a lot of noise, a lot of commotion, and draw a lot of attention, especially if you have a big baits around. Um, that would be my number one choice. Uh, besides metal lip, and I, I would probably stay with a surface. Not I like subsurface metal lip, but I like them in a rougher water and, and, a, and a faster water. I do like these uh, uh, and Danny types in a, in a flatter water. Okay, I want them up on the top. Redfin, if you can get it out there, redfin deadly, absolutely, and stuff like this, definitely underutilized. This is a weighted sluggo, which we use in uh, areas where the water's moving a little faster. And, but I would definitely use the, you know, even the unweighted one. And, and I'm not talking about Sluggo in particular. There's so many brands if you want to go, you know, Mr. Gags makes a lot of stuff. Hoagie makes a lot of stuff. There's a, there's a lot of rubber on the market that you can find. But I'd stay away with, with daughters, uh, with uh, super strike needlefish, with heavy needlefish, with heavy bucktails, with poppers, you know, pencil poppers, metal lips, rubber, and floating needlefish okay if you can get uh let's say a gibbs type or even a custom job that you can buy at the show from a guy that's a slow sinking one where you can twitch it and you can make it work and you can make it you can make it come alive instead of having something that's you know sinking that you worry about too much sinking too fast and, and, and in a straight line because you know if you have a if you have a needlefish that's um uh, a floater you know, and it, has, it could be suspended. It doesn't have to necessarily be a floater, but not, just not a fast sinker. You know, you can twitch it. You can make it work. You know, slow little twitches with the rod. Make it, make it work through there. Uh, that plug that I showed you the other day, the vertebrae, that plug doesn't need a lot of current in order to have uh, a motion. Although I don't know how good of a caster that plug is or how well it holds up to big fish. So, so basically, that's my primer on, on the spots without a current or... If you're fishing areas without a current um, or doing slack tide, where most of your plugs are designed, you know, keep this in mind. Most of the plugs and most of the guys that make these plugs, and these guys have put some time into um, testing this stuff. They make this, most of the stuff is made for an area with certain amount of current, certain amount of moving water. They do, most of them uh, perform better under moving water. So just keep that in mind. So, you know, I wouldn't say an eel unless I really taught an eel. So that to me is your best shot. Maybe this video is a little longer than I thought it would be, but that's my, that's my opinion on it. Um, again, you can subscribe to our channel uh, on the right hand side. There's a little bit Surfcasters Journal logo there. You can also uh, visit our website at surfcastersjournal.com. I, as always, I encourage you to, you know, help other people and share it. And um, again, if you like, if you like what we do, subscribe, give us a shout. See you on the beach.